Recovery Channel, where life's pains are healed. You have good news. But how many people can say, Oh, God did this for me? Very few. Some people don't have anything to share. Nothing to share. Nothing to thank God for. They are beautiful. That's why everything is working for them. They are smart. That's why everything is working for them. They are intelligent. They have certificates. They have connection. They know how to talk. They are wise. That's why everything is working. They know how to sort things out. They are master planners. Ah, me, I'm not to. It's God that is covering my back. And I thank him. I'm eternally grateful. Amen. If you look at the life of David, David was always full of gratitude. Always saying what God has done. Always acknowledging God in everything. Always trying to give back to God. The spirit of gratitude makes you to give back. Your boss helped you. You go, you get him some, maybe a shirt. Some years ago, a friend of mine, I went to see him. I said I needed to travel abroad. But I didn't have money for ticket. The day was so close. And I couldn't tell my host that I didn't have money for ticket. This was like about 12 years ago. I was going to America for a conference. So I went to him, like last resort. I opened up to him. He said, so how much is the ticket? I told him. He just went indoors, counted some money, and gave it to me. Do you know, when I finished the conference, I went out... I bought him boxers, I bought him a shirt, I bought him roll-on, I got some stuff. When I came back, I went to his house. I said, thank you so much. I'm back. I gave him stuff. He looked at me. He said, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do it. I said, no. If you were not there for me, I wouldn't have been able to make this trip. And I knelt down. He said, stand up, man of God. Because he's a man of God, he's a senior minister. Stand up. Then he looked at me, he said, that you had me in your mind when you traveled. Wait. He went indoors. He came back. He took it. He gave me $3,000. There was a man of God several years ago. My car was battered. One Saturday morning, he came to the church and blessed me with a BMW 7 Series American spec. I was shocked. I was so touched. Do you know what? A few years later, he was in a condition. God used me to buy him a Jeep. One good turn. This afternoon. Don't do like this. Don't flex for God. If God can't do you, you will survive it. But you will survive in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, sometimes when you preach like this, some, some strange thing about ingratitude or some strange spirit, you say, Pastor is preaching with me. You are too small. You know what God hates? A proud spirit. If a word comes and it is for you, in humility, say, Lord, have mercy. Is he preaching with me? Is he preaching with me? But see, when you hear his word, harden not your heart. Do you know some people can go beyond a level in life? What some of you call level, you are far beyond that. It is your character that's kept you there. Look at, see, the character of ingratitude is re it reflects in your relationship with God and with man. 
If it's in you, you will carry it towards God. If it's in you, you will carry it towards people. If it's in you, you will carry it towards your fellow men, your contemporaries, your office people, your, your, your sphere of influence. It will always be there. It will always be there. You will show it. You will manifest it. And you know what? It's retrogressive. It's hindering. It's stagnating. Somebody told me something. They say character is like perfume. It goes before you. On the 15th, you know some people plan not to be in church. Thanksgiving. I've heard somebody say, if they see me for church on that day, some years ago, we are planning Thanksgiving, we say, hey, if they see me for church, they cut my leg. Touch your neighbor, say, Thanksgiving does not be begin with money. It begins with a heart. What did David say? Say, what shall I? What shall I what? And then what happened? There was something to render. When you have the heart, the flow will come. Do you know in second chapter 2 of 1 Samuel, verse 21, do you know what happened? Hannah was blessed with five children. She thanked God for one. God gave her five. 4 Samuel chapter 2, verse 21. What he has given you, have you shown gratitude by giving back? If you do, he multiplies what you have done. Five children. Five. See, the world will not mock you. I said the world will not mock you. The world will not ridicule you. You will not be called a name by your affliction. The world will not label you by your challenge. In the name of Jesus. The God you have come to serve will turn your sorrows into joy. All the mockers before you, all those who have made you a parable and a byword, the God of heaven will disgrace them. There's a God who rewards grateful men and grateful women. Change your style. Change your attitude. Amen? Don't let situation push you to begin to do things that are detrimental. Learn to have the culture and the character of a grateful person. Are you with me? It might not look so common. It might not, be, it might not just be the norm. Are you hearing me? But they cultivate it. Grow it. You will see the, the blessings that will go with it. I've shown you scriptures today. Look at the way David organized his life. Always trying to compensate everyone who played a role. Very conscious of it. And look at what God did in his life. Today, Jerusalem is called the city of David. Even Jesus, the son of God, when he came, they called him the son of David. David became so great because he was a man of gratitude. Listen to me. We must learn the act of gratitude. I want you to understand Ungrateful people don't have a future. But I see somebody changing today. There are some things you have in you over the years. Maybe you didn't have somebody to talk to you the way I talk to you. Maybe you didn't have somebody to rebuke you the way I rebuke you. The Bible says, open rebuke is better than secret love. There are certain things you are rebuked for. It will go a long way to change your life when you accept it. In good faith and said yes this is wrong are you all listening to what i'm saying i remember some years back i used to have issues with anger sometimes it happens to me i fight it when i'm angry because i know the implication of anger sometimes i just see myself getting angry and i just talk to myself Sometimes my wife will say, honey, you are just difficult. I'm telling you, sorry, you are getting angry. How many of you know what I'm talking about? There's some, you're not saying sorry, sorry. The more you are saying sorry, that is when the thing starts. Now, so my own baby before. Once you start telling me sorry, 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 the thing starts growing. And I start telling you, see, yes, I know you are saying sorry, but you see, this thing, if you have not done it, this is why I'm angry. Stop this matter. I say, okay, sorry. I don't, no, no, don't tell me sorry. Ah, my father said, now mouth you still take beg. 
One day I told myself, they are telling you sorry. Is it head they used to tell you or leg? So I start talking to myself when I'm angry. There are some situations before. Hey, if it's happening in church, I will blow fire. Your teeth will fall. Once in a while, I lose it. I'm not lying. I'm a human being. But I'm better than yesterday. I talk to myself. Are you hearing me? I talk to myself. I lose it. I used to be a very bitter person. I hold on to anger, pain, but I've changed. When I come to church, I preach on that. Some of you are laughing. I wasn't like that before. I had to learn to make my environment a happy environment. When I was young, I used to, when I was much younger, I would be in the class, I would frown. I, I stumbled into pictures I took when I was young. My face in the photograph. Amen. Now sometimes I even overplay. I overplay. You must learn. Change. And you see changes. Can I hear loud amen? amen. children and they will trace it back to you but they will say oh yes i know your father i know your mother i know you are from this family because i know that your mother have trained you well i know you will not do otherwise god has no plan to destroy your life god has no plan to close the heaven against you he just wants your attention and make adjustments that's all God is not in the noise. He's in the still, small voice. Too much noise. It's not there. God is perfect, but imperfection should not be your lifestyle. They are telling you, drop this, drop this, drop this. You are still like that. Learn to be grateful to everyone around you. Those who pray for you, be grateful to them. Those who assist you, be grateful to them. Never fight people who have played roles in your life. There are people who refuse to help, even when God sent them. There was a man that was beaten, left for dead. The Bible says, the priest came and went the other side. He passed. You, it was God that sent the priest. But the priest refused to be used. The Levi came. The Levi saw the man and bypassed him. He refused to be used. He took a Samaritan to come, looked at the situation, and accepted to be used. So, the Samaritan that was used by God, be grateful. Can I hear loud amen? amen? You have an uncle that is open to you. You want to kill him. Tell my uncle, with all the cars they have, with all the cars they have, only 50,000. What about the auntie that did not allow you into the compound? What about the others who didn't pick your call? He gave you 50. Be glad he did something. He gave you 50. Do you know how much he's owing the bank? He could be owing the bank 10 billion. You are carried away by the cars and everything. Do you know how he got his cars? Do you know how he built his house? Do you know how he pays his staff? He considered you, created a room for you, and pulled out 50. Do you know what the banks are telling him? Do you know they are threatening his life? Do you know big men, they take big risk that the poor will never take? You see somebody, hey, he has, he has, he has. Do you know what he did to have those things? And it will make sacrifice for you. you. You play it down. What about your papa? We will not help you. you. You are still bearing his name. You didn't kill him. You left him. And you are killing an uncle who didn't give birth to you. Be grateful. 
Only you are saying, God, if you don't bless me this December, January, I won't serve you. You are threatening him. I give you 30 months. Some say, I give you 30 weeks. So I say, I give you from now till 15th. If you don't show yourself, I will not come for Thanksgiving. God said, no problem. Let us keep fighting. Can a man strive with his maker and prosper? Who strives with his master and succeeds? Lord, if I don't get a spouse this year, if I don't get a spouse this year, I am only telling you my mind, do. Tell you my mind. I will say more than that. I will say more than that. Amen. They told me 16, 16, there are three festivals every year. Three festivals. Someone say three. We have the Feast of Passover. The Feast of Pentecost. And we have the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Passover. They celebrate it every year in Israel to remind Israel how they were delivered when the firstborn were killed in the land. So God will make them repeat it in ceremony. How they were spared and their firstborn. It's a ceremony. Then the feast of Pentecost is the feast of first fruit. Where they come to thank God with their harvest. Appreciating God as a hand behind their harvest. Then the last one is the feast of tabernacles. Where Israel, for one week, we go into the tent in the wilderness. They'll stay there. Reminding God wants them to remember how He preserved them for 40 years. Now, in all this feast, God said, Don't appear empty. Thanksgiving is coming. See, propose in your heart. It's not a task, it's just an expression of gratitude. Look for something. Listen to me. It's an investment for your next level. Thanksgiving. Give the Lord a big hand. I'll show you a scripture now. Turn to your feet. Revelation 15 verse 3. Read it with me. One to go. Revelation 15 verse 3. They did what? They sang the song of what? They sang the song of what? And what was the song about? Great and marvelous are the works. Lord Almighty, just true are thy ways. Thou King of what? The saints. Okay, go to the next verse. They were praising God. They were singing the songs of Moses. All right, go to the next verse of scripture. Who shall not fear thee and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. All right? Is that not so? They were praising God. They were singing the song of Moses. Look at what happened. Look at the next verse of scripture. One, two, go. And after that, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was what? Was opened. As they praise God and praise God and sang the song of Moses. The next thing, the Bible says, the tabernacle of testimony was open. As they began to show gratitude, God opened the tabernacle. <laughs> Give this people a testimony. Tabernacle of testimony shall be open to you. Testimonies will not cease in your life in Jesus' name. And everyone say big amen. amen. Somebody say, how do I thank God? You thank God with material things. Hannah brought things to the house of God. But we encourage you to give, to monetize it. Are you listening to me? To monetize your giving. Why do we ask you to monetize it? There was one Sunday we were doing Thanksgiving. We finished Thanksgiving. I was still ministering. Right on the altar, the chicken laid egg. I looked at the chicken. Right on this altar, we have done Thanksgiving. We see chicken, fire, and ushers portion the chicken. Is it wrong to bring yam? No. Monetize it. First of all, monetize it so we can have, we can translate it into things in the house of God. Then you can add one or two of these things. But it should not become the major. By the time you bring a whole bunch of tissue paper, that means all the pastors should be going to the toilet. Amen. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Monetize it. After you have monetized what you want to give to God, you can just put maybe an addition. But to make the bulk, 
material things you are making it difficult for us to translate it into other things in church because your thanksgiving must reflect in the work of God and the whole church say big amen amen, amen. amen. how do you thank God you thank him in praise that is why we are having this special program called worship to worship as we are thanking God like we saw in Revelation 15 the next thing the tabernacle of testimonies was what was opened to all father lord do so in the name of jesus wave your hands and thank you wave your hands and thank the lord wave you. thank you miss december it has finally come lift your voice and thank you it has finally come worship him everyone thank him for you this morning that God will cause your business to increase I see angels I see helpers I see influencers I see men and women positioned to bless you I see people rising up in the morning and God planting your thoughts in their mind to do businesses with you I see people say, come, I know this sister, that's what she does, call her, call him. Many of you will get businesses you did not even know how to handle. And you become like a broker, a subcontractor. May things that will make you be buoyant manifest in your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless this church, bless everyone tonight. I rebuke the power of the devil, I rebuke the hand of darkness. I come against the things that trouble men in December and women, the things that affect people in families. I come against the seasons of dryness. We recognize that in our country, Lord, that Hamatan is always synonymous with the Christmas celebration. And we bind and we decree that anything that is attached to the seasons of the Hamatan, to any man's finances, that when the year comes to a close, they become dry. Father, we break the curse. Amen. Any curse that is time sensitive, we break it. Amen. We break it. Amen. I say 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 we break it. Amen. I release a traffic of supernatural supply. You are here this afternoon. You are wondering, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? From today, begin to say, God can. Nor can God. Someone say, God can. God can. Yes, you can. Yes, you will. You have done it before. You will do it again. When they ask for meat, say it with me. Say, when they ask for meat, right where they were, Lord, you blew the quails towards them. They began to lot for meat. Too much meat in their tent. When they asked for bread, you caused manna to rain upon them. 
you brought water out of the rock lord you did it in the wilderness not to talk of a city raise men and women let them bring my meat let them bring my bread let the wind of the spirit blow these things into my life from this day henceforth i receive appointment letter i receive considerations oh god of heaven that which has been longer waited i receive it right now in the name of jesus as i jam my hands in prayer let the blessings come let the blessings come Thank you for watching our broadcast. I'm so glad you stayed to the end of this broadcast. I want to invite you for our special services, which I strongly believe is going to be a great blessing to you as you connect with this ministry. Don't just stop at watching make an effort to be part of this meeting where the Spirit of God is at work every week touching lives. Now, every Sunday morning we begin our first service at the Kedja Center, number 19, Oba Accra. Now, the Kedja is more a mainland church, so where, wherever you are in the city, you can easily connect. So, for easy connectivity, we can, we, 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 our church is positioned at the mainland, uh, number 19, Oba Accra. We begin our services there by 8 o'clock in the morning. We terminate by 10. And then at the headquarter church at Egbeda, number 11, Awe Street in Ibalaji, bus stop. We begin at Egbeda church from 10 to 12. Now, during the week, we have a special meeting which we tag healing and deliverance, which is every Tuesday morning, 9 to 11. And during that program, we minister to the faith needs of the people. We deal with demonic issues. We prophesy as the Spirit of God gives us the utterance and the supply of the Spirit to minister to the people. And we connect to them and minister to their faith need. As I perceive by the Spirit of prophecy, people and cases are located and they are ministered to. And we have a powerful prayer line where everyone that is part of the program can be ministered to. That's the beauty about the program. Everyone that comes can be ministered to. You are not lost in the crowd. So we have the special prayer line every Tuesday morning at the end of the healing and deliverance service. Now on Wednesday we have our midweek service. It's a prophetic service. It starts 6 30 in the evening and terminates to 9. Now in this meeting we teach and then the prophetic most times because we are always expecting the Spirit of God to speak after we hear the word of God to speak back to us and to minister to us. So as we receive the prophecies and solution, cases are picked and people are ministered to. Now on Thursday back to the mainland, 8.30 in the morning we have what we call the Breakthrough Fountain. It's a program designed for business people to come for one hour. You know, Jesus talked about praying for one hour. We believe if people can spend an hour in prayer, the power of God will touch them and minister to them. So Thursday morning from 8.30 to 9.30, we have the Breakthrough Fountain. It's an hour of intercession and prayer. A minister, prophetically, cases are mentioned. And those affected are asked to wait to see me one-on-one. Now, I can say from 9.30 to 12 on Thursday, and that's all for the morning session. Now, later in the evening, for those who can make it because of work or school or business, we have an evening session that begins from 6.30 and terminates by 8.15 on Thursday. Now, get connected to this program and be part of any of the church services, either the one in the suburb at Egbeda or the one in the mainland. Get connected, and I trust God that you will experience the things you see on this broadcast. The Lord bless you. Keep on watching the Recovery Channel.